In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an almost automatic photo slideshow in Microsoft PowerPoint. You might already be familiar with the fact that you can go here to insert, click, and click on pictures, and you can insert pictures one at a time. Just find the photos on your computer. I've got some on my desktop, so I can just click, go to the folder of images, and I could import each photo one at a time. Or I could instead click and drag to highlight all the photos, click insert, and pull in multiple photos all at once. But honestly, in both of those cases, that's a lot more work than I typically want to do if I want to create a slideshow. I want this to be quick. I want it to be easy. I don't want to have to distribute each of these photos now onto a different slide. And there are other issues as well that I'd rather not have to face. So I'm going to undo that just by clicking the undo button a few times. And I want you to see instead a much easier way to create a photo slideshow in PowerPoint. And I am going to go ahead and click insert just like I did to show you how to insert pictures one at a time or all at once. But this time, instead of clicking insert pictures, here on the insert tab and ribbon, I'm going to go to the images group and there at the right, it says photo album. And I'm just going to click here at the top part of that button and it brings up a window that I can use to pull in several different images. And at this point, what you're going to want to do is just click the file disk button to insert pictures from a file on your computer. So I'll click that. It brings up a window that I can use to explore my computer and find the photos. You can see that it already found them automatically in this case. But when you do this, you may have to click around to find your folder of images. And it really is helpful to already have those photos downloaded and put together in a folder all together and ready to be used. So now if I can click and drag to get all of these images, I will get a better result than what I showed earlier. But I want you to see a shortcut. In this case, it's easy for me to click and drag. I only have 12 or 15 images here. But what if I had 100 or 500? I wouldn't want to click and drag to select and insert those images. So a better way to do it is to hold the control key on your keyboard and tap A and that selects all and then you can click insert. Now hopefully you can see right away the difference between doing it this way and the way that I showed at the beginning. This did not just automatically pile all of those images onto one slide, but rather it brought them in to this list of pictures in the album. And you can see if you click through them, you get a preview here at the right of what that image looks like. Okay, so lots of beautiful nature pictures. And these are all images that I got for free on the internet using the Bing image search. And these are royalty free images that are designated for people to be able to use for free. If you're interested in learning about that and how to find such images, please watch my tutorial on the Bing image search. But as you can see, these images were kind of randomly put into this list for my photo album. If I want to reorder them, I can just click to select a particular image and then I can use this button to move it up or down. You can also select multiple images and move them all up and all down. If you change your mind about any of these images and decide you don't want them, you can just click the remove button and whatever is checked will be removed. There are a few basic photo editing options here. If I want to change this particular photo a little bit, I could try clicking to rotate the image. I could adjust it in a few other ways like making it brighter, making it darker. So there are a few very basic photo editing options here at the right. At the left, we have a button here that says insert text. If I click new text box, notice that it adds another picture, but this time they call it a text box and it says after you create your photo album, you can click a text box on a slide and type your own text. So I'm going to put that here just so that we can see what that looks like once the slideshow is created. If you really want to, you could check this box and make all pictures black and white. I do not want to do that in this case, but you could. All right, I think I'm just about ready to click create and to show you the results of my photo slideshow. But I also do want to point out down here at the bottom, there is an option for picture layout. And right now the default is fit to slide. So each picture will be resized to fit this slide as perfectly as they possibly can. If you prefer though, you could choose one picture per slide, which is slightly different. It doesn't resize the image. You could choose two pictures and you can see it goes up to four pictures with tile. I'm going to stick with fit to slide. I think that looks great. 
Sometimes you can adjust the frame shape. And if you have a theme that you want to use, you could browse and find a theme, open it, and it would apply that theme to your photo slideshow in PowerPoint. But I'm happy with this. I'm going to click Create and watch what happens. It gives me a blank slide at the beginning with a title already put in. I can edit that, of course, in PowerPoint. And then each of my images is given its own slide. And there is text box. So honestly, I don't find the text box option extremely useful. And I'm just going to right click on that slide and delete the slide. But the rest of this looks great. Now you may be noticing that there's kind of a letterbox effect going on. As PowerPoint resized these photos to make them fit the slides that I have, it didn't want to distort the image. PowerPoint is determined not to distort the image. And so in order to not distort it, it has to stop the resizing at the point where you can't go any bigger. So if I were to go bigger, this would extend the picture beyond the size of my slide. And so PowerPoint stops about right there. Now there are a couple of things you can do if you don't like that letterbox effect. I don't necessarily recommend this, but you could click on your photo. And if you notice, there is a little handle there at the left. You could click and drag that handle to extend it so that it fills the screen at the left and also at the right. So I don't recommend that in all cases because it does distort your photo a little bit. It stretches it out. But in this case, I think the results look pretty good. So it's up to you to decide that. You can see the comparison here between the two photos. A few other things to be aware of, in addition to the fact that, yes, you should probably rename the photo album. I'll just name this Nature Photos by Windows user. I like that. But a few other things you should know. You can see that PowerPoint automatically put in a black background for all of my slides. And if I don't like that, if that's not what I want, I could go to Design, choose Format Background, and choose a solid color and I could just choose a different color. So you can see how that looks. And now if I want to, I can click apply to all in the lower left corner. And now all of my images have a blue background. I actually kind of prefer the black one, the original. So I'm going to switch back. A couple of other things we can do to our PowerPoint photo slideshows include we could add transitions. So I can click here on the transitions tab. And there are a bunch of different transitions that I can choose from, like a fade, a cut, a push, transition, and so much more. And there's some fairly fancy ones here. If you click on the little arrow button, you'll see that you get a bunch of others like a curtain. That's kind of a fun transition. In the more recent versions of PowerPoint, there's an origami effect, which is interesting, paper airplane, and so much more. I'm going to go with vortex for mine. Now, if I like that and I want that to appear on all of my slides as the transition, I can just click over here where it says apply to all. And you can see there are some effect options too. If you want to play with those, those are kind of fun. But I'm just going to click apply to all and let's look at my presentation at this point. I go back to the first slide and I'm going to click to view my slideshow. There we have my title, my first image, my second image is coming up. So kind of a cool transition. I like that. Now, what if I wanted my slideshow to just be playing constantly, maybe at a wedding or at a back to school night at a school? Maybe I want to have these pictures just automatically advancing from one picture to the next without someone controlling it. Of course, you could just use a presenter remote. And if you're interested in learning about some good presenter remotes, look in the description below for some suggestions. But it would probably be even better and easier to have the slideshow automatically advance. So if you go here to transitions, there is that option. I can go to where it says advance slide and by default it only advances on mouse click. Now that also includes tapping spacebar, hitting the arrow keys, using a presenter remote, all of those things. But in addition to that, I want to say if I haven't clicked on the mouse after let's say 1.5 seconds, then I want it to automatically advance. Now that's just going to happen with this particular slide that I had selected, but I can also, if I want to, I can put in that number and click apply to all. And now all of them should have that same advanced slide after 1.5 seconds. So let's try it out. I'm going to go down here this time and click to start the slideshow. There's my title. After 1.5 seconds, it should advance. And this should continue throughout the entire presentation. Now that's great, but at the wedding, 
or at the back to school night, let's say that the slideshow ends. You get all the way through all the pictures and it's over. You're probably going to want the slideshow to loop. So I'm going to click here on slideshow and on the slideshow ribbon, notice the setup group. We have an option to set up the slideshow. I'm going to click that and there is an option to loop continuously until escape. Until someone presses the escape key on the keyboard, it's just going to keep on looping. To see if this is actually working, I'm going to go to my last slide and I'll start the presentation. Let's see if this works. So here's the final slide, 1.5 seconds later. It dissolves into the vortex and we're back to the beginning of the slideshow. So I hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you're interested in supporting my YouTube channel, please consider becoming a patron of mine through my Patreon account. And you'll find information about that also in the description below.